What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you something a little different with what I have as a working title, The Intricacies of a Game Review, or Game Reviews in general, really. Now, I want to start this off by saying that I am very blessed to be able to do this for a living. And while game reviews aren't the only thing I do, I in fact make a lot of guides, especially for games that otherwise don't really get them. And typically speaking, if I'm playing through a game for a review and notice that there's a certain lack of guides, usually I'll just make them myself. But regardless of that, the fact is that game reviews have, over the past year and a half, kind of become the cornerstone of what this channel is about. And again, I'm very blessed to be able to do that for a living. It's definitely a dream come true on my part. So when we jump into these things and I talk about them, understand that I am in no way complaining about them. My goal for this video is to hopefully offer up a viewpoint about game reviews and how that works in a perspective that people in general might not get to see or think about, which will hopefully make for some unique things or points for you, the viewer. Because I ultimately decided to make this video because this isn't something I've ever seen any other person who makes game reviews talk about. So I kind of wanted to break all this stuff down and talk about it for myself. So first and foremost, I thought it would be best to start this off with why I started doing reviews in the first place. Because if you followed my channel for a very long time, my channel is about six years old now. And again, reviews have only constituted a big part of it for like the last year and a half or so. So why the change? And ultimately that can be boiled down to a few different reasons, but I would say there are two primary reasons. One is that simply put, I did not enjoy the reviews put out by most major publishers, game magazines, game journalists, whatever you wanna call it. Basically every mainstream reviewer for video games, I found to be very shallow. And they would only really talk about the games in, again, a very surface level, while using this very creative writing approach that kind of doesn't really tell you anything about the game. And I felt like I should put my money where my thoughts were at this point and start making reviews for myself. Now, the other second major thing for why I started doing this was that simply put, in real life, if you will, I'm a bit of a loner. However, I do love video games. I love talking about them, obviously. I love sharing those experiences with people. And as someone who's a bit of a loner IRL, I don't always get a chance to do those things, so YouTube provides an opportunity to both talk about those video games with basically everyone and anyone, while simultaneously letting me review and put my money where my mouth is about poor reviews from other reviewing media, if you will. So now that we got the why out of the way, let's start talking about some of the individual aspects of reviews and the way I think about them. So first and foremost, when it comes to reviewing anything, I think it's important to understand who your audience is, and depending on the type of review, this is absolutely the kind of thing that can change. And for me specifically, it's definitely a matter of what game am I reviewing. So if I'm reviewing an older title, for instance, people aren't watching that to get a purchasing decision 9 out of 10. They're ultimately going to be watching that because they want my opinion about a game they've previously played or enjoyed, or in some cases, someone else is looking to play that older title and is kind of just looking for a general opinion on it. But it is rare that anyone watches a review of an older title specifically to make a purchasing decision. That's important because that's very different from a launch review. If you are reviewing a game for its launch, a significant portion of the people looking at that review are making a purchasing decision. And at the end of the day, I'm not trying to sell you a video game. I'm just giving you my opinions about a video game. What I am trying to sell you has already succeeded by the fact that you're watching the video, because that's how I get paid. At the end of the day, whether you choose to buy or not buy that game doesn't matter to me personally as long as it's your decision. So with those reviews, the goal, and for the audience, I imagine the most useful part of it, is giving you as much information about this game as I can, and my opinions about it as well, so that you can come to a conclusion about that title, which is obviously different from older games where that's not really the focus. But broadly speaking, those are going to be the reasons someone watches a review. Obviously, there's more than just that, but those are, I would say, the big reasons. Now, from there, it actually gets a little more complicated because those audience members are largely going to want a different style of review in general. And at the end of the day, I can only produce what I can produce which is why the fact that there are so many outlets who can do reviews is very important because that way you get a very broad perspective of everyone's opinion. But as an example, some people really just want a TLDR. Is it good or bad? 
or they want something very easy to point to and be like, here's how I feel about this game. And that's why I feel like ranking systems or rating systems are very popular, because that way you can be like, oh, it's an 8 out of 10. Personally, I don't like ranking systems. It's one of those things where it's fine on the surface, but when you dig into it, you start running into a lot of problems. Like right off the bat, no game is perfect, so giving something a 10 out of 10 just doesn't make any sense to me. I understand the feeling they're trying to convey, but I feel like personally, for me, a ranking or rating system gets complicated the more you try to justify it by making up all these artificial rules, and then you get situations like IGN where games are all over the place, and it doesn't really feel like there's any meaning behind their rating system. So personally, I like to stray away from that, and basically I just tell you, would I pay full price for this game, would I buy it on sale, or would I just not buy it? As I feel those are more qualitative stances that someone can take that make more sense for me. However, some people do like a rating system, and that's why IGN and all these major publishers that use them have success with them at the end of the day. But I talk about that to kind of move into my next point, and that is just that reviews are opinions. They are the opinion of the person reviewing the title. No single review will ever be representative of every single person's opinion on a title. And just like any other place where you see someone's opinion, not everyone is going to agree with that opinion. My personal approach to this has simply been to include as much objective information about a title as I can. This is why I personally like to spend a lot of time talking about the systems of a game and how it functionally works so people get a good feel of the gameplay itself. And then I will usually include my personal opinions about a title at the end. However, that's just how I do it, and for some people, that does not work. Some people do not enjoy that. Not so much anymore, but when I first started reviewing a lot of titles, something I would get in response to my reviews was that people would tell me that it wasn't a review, it was just a statement of the game, it was more like a guide. And that's largely because they didn't actually watch all the way to the end to get the opinion portion of the video where I actually talk about how I feel about certain aspects, give positives and negatives, etc. And that kind of bleeds into my next point. If you are going to be critical of anything, be it a video game, a piece of media, a book, whatever it is you're reviewing, it is important to both be critical and accept criticism. Being critical of things you love and enjoy is important because that's how you make those things better. However, a lot of people tend to struggle with, in my experience, the concept of being critical about something you enjoy. There are a great many games that I love to death that I am critical of because I want them to grow and improve. And much in that way, I think as a reviewer, it's important to put yourself in the mindset of the people criticizing your videos and giving you suggestions are trying to help you grow just the way that you should be trying to help these games grow. And that's very much so a two-way street. As a result of this, the people that referred to my early reviews as guides and stuff, I took that criticism seriously and I started addressing it. I changed the format of some of my videos. I'll usually mention at the beginning that I talk more about opinions towards the end of the review, because if you're just clicking on a review and I don't tell you that all the opinions are at the end, that's on me. And I tell you all that largely to mention that if you yourself cannot accept constructive criticism, and learn to grow and improve, then you yourself really don't have any business being critical of media and things that people have worked years of their life on. And to me, reviewing video games, if you take nothing else away from this video, providing constructive criticism is a two-way street. As a whole, I want to use that situation to make my videos and what I do better, while at the same time providing feedback to hopefully make video games better. That's a really big goal of what my channel does with these reviews, and my own little journey of self-improvement in this regard, if you will. Now, on the topic of criticism in particular, while this certainly isn't unique to reviews or anything, anytime you produce anything for consumption by the general public, you need to have a thick skin. Because, to put it very bluntly, anytime you put yourself out there, there are going to be people who do not like you. They don't like the way you talk, they don't like the way you think, they don't care for your opinions. It can be a million different things, but they do not like what you do. And that's okay. However, this bothers some people more than others. And that's why you find some unfortunate situations where people take it a bit too personally. So a large piece of advice for YouTube in general, not just for game reviews, is that 
anytime you're offering a pretty subjective opinion about anything, you really have to expect people to honestly just be rude about it because that's going to happen. However, I will say that the overwhelming majority of people just want to help and see you improve. But you will nonetheless get the occasional person who is just excessively negative or very directly like this sucks or you as a person are bad in some way. That absolutely happens. And yeah, it's not fun, but at the end of the day, you have to really just be able to shake that stuff off, ignore it, and move on. However, make sure you don't ignore people who are offering legitimate criticism, because oftentimes I've noticed it can be hard for some people to differentiate between those two things. Because someone telling you, hey, I don't think this is very good, here's how I believe you can do it better, and someone telling you, hey man, this video sucks, really isn't the same thing. And even if you disagree with that first person, It would still behoove you to hear them out and hopefully improve from that experience and get a more robust thinking about what your audience as a whole feels about your content. But to kind of sum up all of those points and talk about the intricacies of game review, if you will, is that reviewing games or reviewing anything is largely opinion based. And as such, people are going to disagree with you. There is no one perfect method of reviewing something, no matter how thorough it is, because at the end of the day, everyone's got a different opinion, and a lot of people aren't going to share yours about a video game. Now, my personal response to that, as I mentioned, has been to include a lot of objective information about a title, so that even if those people who disagree with my opinion watch the video, they will at least come away from the review with an understanding about how the game works regardless of how they feel about my opinion about the title, at least for launch reviews. And then we have reviews for older titles where you have to adjust your thinking a little bit and remember that people are largely just after your opinion about these titles. You don't necessarily need to go as hard into the mechanics unless it's a very obscure game where maybe a lot of people don't know how to play it. Like for instance, Baldur's Gate. One of my best long-term videos has actually been a guide about all of the rules and mechanics behind advanced Dungeons and Dragons that went into the first Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 titles. In those particular games, I covered the mechanics of those games quite a bit because I figured the people watching it might benefit from learning how to play those games because oftentimes the reason people are watching reviews for those titles is because they don't want to go back and play them personally because they're very old and clunky. So a lot of what goes into reviews is, again, Accepting that your opinion is just your opinion, which means it is not perfect or infallible. You have to remember who is watching your review. Are you presenting information in a way that is going to be digestible for them? Is it giving them the appropriate information about the title that they expected going into it? Again, older game versus launch review. If you're willing to be critical about a title, if you have a point to make about it, are you also at the same time willing to take criticism yourself? All of which I think are very important questions that you should ask yourself anytime you go to review any piece of media. And they are questions I ask myself very often as someone who's doing this for a living. Hopefully that wasn't too excessively rambly for everyone, but as we draw this video to a close, I just want to again emphasize there is no perfect way to review anything because reviews are opinion based and opinions can change. And bringing all of these topics together and asking myself all of these questions is in large part on my behalf, at least, how I attempt to make my channel better, how I attempt to make these reviews better, and honestly, just a snapshot of all the thought that I put into these reviews to hopefully share and help people either enjoy someone else's opinion about an older title or make a purchasing decision for a title that just came out, etc., But nonetheless, it's something I take very seriously, and I wanted to take some time to talk about it for a while, again, in a hopefully unique perspective for some people. So with all of that said, guys, honestly, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, by all means, let me know down below. If you watched this entire video, I certainly do appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but truly, thank you. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.